six years, $1.9 billion, tens of thousands of laborers, 3,000 kilometers of track, 4.5 million ties, 7 million spikes, 740,000 rails, 19 tunnels, thousands of kegs of black powder, and over 100 deaths led to this monumental triumphant scene on May 10, 1869. The mammoth Jupiter locomotive blanketed by laborers and engineers from the Central Pacific Railroad on the left and the grand number 119 locomotive covered by workers of the rival Union Pacific Railroad on the right. Union Pacific completed over 1700 kilometers of track from east to west and Central Pacific completed over 1100 kilometers of track from west to east and the rival companies met at Promontory Summit, Utah Territory, concluding the construction of the first transcontinental railroad. And 148 years later, Elon Musk and his company SpaceX is looking to build the transcontinental railroad to Mars, leading to the eventual colonization of the Red Planet. Musk wrote on Reddit, our goal is to get you there and ensure the basic infrastructure for propellant production and survival is in place. A rough analogy is that we are trying to build the equivalent of the transcontinental railway." End quote. This is a captivatingly rich analogy that intertwines imagery of two age-defining achievements, one from the past and one unfolding before us. But before we explore this connection, let's touch on SpaceX Mars colonization plans. SpaceX will get colonists to Mars by the way of the Big F*** rocket, or BFR, with seemingly unimaginable power. SpaceX amazed us on February 6th when they launched Starman and the Tesla Roadster into space with the Falcon Heavy which is now the most powerful operational rocket in the world by a factor of two. But the Falcon Heavy will be pale in comparison to the BFR, which will have more than two and a half times the payload capacity than the Falcon Heavy, capable of launching 150,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. The colossal rocket will produce over 50 mega newtons of thrust, well more than the mighty Saturn V. Not only will the BFR be remarkably more powerful than the Falcon Heavy, it will be significantly cheaper too. This is because the BFR will be completely reusable, whereas the Heavy's second stage and payload fairing has to be manufactured with each launch. The BFR will be so phenomenal, SpaceX will phase out the Falcon 9 and Heavy and eventually use the BFR for all its missions. Just as the first transcontinental railway, the construction of the BFR will be an engineering feat that will be age-defining. SpaceX is starting with the BFR spaceship first, which serves as the second stage of the vehicle. The reason being is that this is the most technically challenging to get right due to the extreme heat that the spaceship will have to withstand as it enters atmospheres from various transfer orbit velocities. The spaceship will have to be equipped with a highly reusable heat shield that can absorb the immense heat. Additionally, the BFR spaceship will need to be able to travel in a variety of environments such as the vacuum of space and rarefied gas and thin and thick atmospheres. And the spaceship will need to be able to take off and land from unimproved land including the rocky surfaces of the moon and Mars. Look at how amazing it's going to be. It's hard to grasp how massive it will be at 48 meters in length. This is the interior of an Airbus double-deck wide-body A380, the world's largest airliner. At 825 cubic meters, the BFR spacecraft will have more space than the main deck of the A380. According to Musk, now that the Falcon Heavy is complete, all of SpaceX engineering resources are concentrating on the BFR and they hope to be able to complete the BFR spaceship and start testing it next year. At that time, they will start with hopper tests to practice vertical takeoff and landings with the spaceship, similar to the test program with the Grasshopper demonstration rocket. 
Here's a look at the Grasshopper test flight in 2013, amazingly shot by a hexacopter drone. Imagine this next year watching the towering BFR spaceship defy gravity and rise from the surface up into the blue sky looking down on the terrain before slowly hovering down to the ground to a soft landing. I can't wait to see that. The hopper test will likely take place at SpaceX's new launch complex near Brownsville, Texas. Another option would be for the hopper test to take place between two ships and that would be a spectacular sight. And eventually the test will become increasingly complex to include testing the heat shield by completing a re-entry into the atmosphere. Once SpaceX completes the BFR spaceship, the BFR booster will be more straightforward to engineer by comparison. And Musk aims to complete the entire vehicle in three to four years. The completion of the BFR will mark the beginning of a new era for humanity just as the Transcontinental Railroad marked the beginning of a new era in the United States. Before the Transcontinental Railroad, settlers traveled on either the Oregon or California trails. Both of the legendary trails started in Independence, Missouri and broke off at Fort Hall, Idaho. The trails were brutally long almost 3,500 kilometers with the Oregon Trail and 4,800 kilometers with the California Trail as the settlers trudged along next to their wagons traveling at two to three miles an hour for six months. The trails were unforgivingly dangerous. An estimated 16,000 of the 400,000 settlers died on the trails leading west. The main cause was cholera, but other common causes of deaths included scurvy, hypothermia, drowning, getting ran over by wagons, and Native American attacks. And traveling through the trails was expensive, costing $1,000 to travel from New York to the West Coast. For these reasons, the West was a wild frontier. Until May 10, 1869 with the completion of the Transcontinental Railway. After the Transcontinental Railroad was completed, it costs only $150 to travel to the West Coast compared to $1,000, and it turned a harsh six-month journey into a week-long leisurely trip. For the first time, the wild frontier of the West was tamed. By 1879, $1 billion worth of freight traveled on the Transcontinental Railroad annually. And just as the Transcontinental Railroad led to the economic boom in the West, SpaceX Mars colonization plans promises prosperous opportunity on literally a multi-planetary scale. Musk said a vast amount of industry will need to be built on Mars by many other companies and by millions of people. End quote. Now let's bring it back to where our journey began 148 years ago. 3,000 kilometers of track, 4.5 million ties, 7 million spikes, and 740,000 rails leading to this monumental triumphant moment. The moment of two companies that connected the country to the West. A land where today lies one company connecting humanity to the red planet to create our monumental triumphant moment. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. And if you wanna know how cool life will be like in the future, join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe and see you on our next journey. Hey guys, I had so much fun creating this video. And now that the Falcon Heavy has launched, my new favorite topic is the BFR by far. The coolest thing happened when I sat down to start this script for this video. You see, the best characteristic of my house is that I have a slight view of Harrisburg's modest skyline, the capital of Pennsylvania, and it's a gorgeous glance away from my computer screen. 
Anyway, the view overlooks a shallow ridge leading to the drowsy Susquehanna River, peeking through the line of maple trees. Up from the river towards my house lies the Enola Yard, which was once the world's largest freight yard until 1956. So when I started to think about how to start the script, I was staring out the window and I could see the black rail cars moving slowly in the distance. And it hit me right then and there that it would be cool to explore the transcontinental railroad analogy. So if you connect with my content and want to help, you can pledge as little as a dollar a video to help Neoscribe be the best channel it can be, and every bit will help. And if you want to help me continue to create more videos and support Neoscribe, you can visit my Patreon page by clicking here, or there is a link in the description below.